Hello, what's up? Back again. Going to talk about today um, literally what it actually means to become someone who is consistently um, disciplined and dedicated to meditating on a regular basis. Okay? And if you want to get started with that, I'm going to explain to you what I think is the best, you know, option for your average person who doesn't know anything about getting started with meditation. I'm going to explain to you what I think is your best option for that. Okay? So, this is kind of the thing I've been talking about lately, which is three... Three, three. I guess we're going to call this the triple three meditation challenge. Okay. And that basically means three minutes for three times a week for three months. That's triple three meditation challenge. Three minutes, three times a week for three months. Okay. You can do this. You can actually do it. And and this will increase your quality of life, your capacity to improve as a human being. I promise you. Like I that's what's going to happen. There's no other outcome. That's what will happen. Okay? So you want to just accept that's the reality. In the same way that if you do push-ups, your fucking chest muscles will increase, okay? Your shoulders, your arms will strengthen. It's the same shit. If you do this meditation challenge and you actually stick with it, your life will improve. You will start to go in a better direction. Now, you want to take a moment to just observe your life as it is now. Just feel into your body, feel, take some of your thoughts that come in, look around you, and just wonder, is this where I actually want to be? Am I on the path that I want to be? Am I the person that I would be proud of? When I was a little kid, and I was thinking about what I would be like when I was an adult, Am I now that kind of person? Like, would I want to spend time around myself? When I was a little kid, would I want to... Because, you know, when you're a little kid, you just gravitate towards things that interest you. Like a little, like a plant, you go over by the plant. Like, when you see a dog, you go by the dog. You see, like, your, like, um, your, like, parent's friend or, like, an uncle or something who's really cool. And you just, like, go by them and, like, stand by them. Okay, you want to think, is that the kind of person that you are? Unfortunately, probably not, right? Like most people probably not. They aren't, they aren't the kind of person who they wanted to be. They, they've fallen short and they've given up. Most people have just given up. But that doesn't have to be the case. Like you, you don't have to remain like that. You can start to move in this direction. You can start to move into the direction to be the kind of person that you would have been proud of, you know, as a kid or you would have been drawn to. You can start to become that kind of person and it actually can take place. And that, in fact, that's why you're here. You're here to be that person. You're not here to be the kind of person that you are now. You're not here to be fucking disgusted in yourself. You're not here to be upset with yourself. You're not here to be fucking constantly failing, you know, at life. Like you're not here to be a constant reminder of how disappointed you are in yourself. All of that shit, all of that shit, that, that feelings of, um, fucking constantly feeling oppressed by failure and bullshit and nonsense and self-hatred. Those are just thoughts and feelings and you're eventually going to move away from that and towards the like, inherent person that you could have always been that you always wanted to be and a way that you can actually fucking get started with that okay is three minutes of meditation three times a week 
for three months. That's how you'll begin to realize you can commit to something in life. Because people all the time will be like, no, fuck that. I'm going to meditate every day. I'm going to do it. I'm going to start doing it. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to work out every day. I'm going to eat clean every day for my whole life. And they fucking don't. Right? They say it, but it never fucking happens. So this is why I'm I'm putting this out there as like a reasonable thing. It's reasonable. You, you, and it's going to be probably harder than you even think. Like people will hear this and they'll be like, that's fucking easy. I'm not doing three minutes. I'm going to do 20 minutes every day. But that same person in a month will have not done it. That's the fucking truth. They will have not done it. So you actually want to do it. You actually want to commit to something and do it. And that's why I'm making this somewhat simple, but at the same time, still hard. That's the thing. The average person, this will have been like the most difficult thing they will probably have done in years. Meditating for three minutes, three times a week for three months. Like that will fuck them up. Like it will fucking wreck them. Like a lot of people... Not only will they not be able to do it, it will fuck them up. Just, just the, the knowledge of how far away they are from, the con from being in alignment with who they want to be, it will fucking wreck them. That's the same with like, like particularly like guys who think they know how to fight. Who they, they think that they can win a fight. And when they go one time to a gym, to like a jiu-jitsu gym or a boxing gym or whatever, they go one time. And they realize that what they know is nothing. They don't know anything. And that another human being could kill them fairly easily. And there's really nothing they could do. Like, that's the truth, man. And when people see that, they, it traumatizes them. And they don't know how to deal with it. So what I'm saying is you want to you wanna preemptively... Um, engage with this idea. So you want to start getting involved with meditation. You want to start right away. Okay, you want to do three minutes today so that you can, you can begin to realize where you really stand in relation to the kind of person who you want to be. Where do you really stand? Maybe you're very, very far away from where you want to be. Maybe you're fucking miles away. Maybe you're years away. But you know what? That's okay. Because if you start now, you can start to come to grips with that. And you can start to realize, oh, hey, this is where I am. Or this is how I feel right now. Or me doing three minutes of meditation. Or you know what? If you're more advanced and you're doing 20 minutes, you're doing a fucking hour, that's awesome too. And you can still engage with these ideas. It doesn't matter where, what level you're at. We're all on the same path, hopefully. Hopefully we're trying. And you can begin to say, wow, three minutes was incredibly hard for me. You know, three minutes was devastatingly difficult for me. But hey, you did it. You tried. And you're going to come back in a few days and do it again. And again, you're going to think, hey, maybe that was kind of hard. But whatever, you tried, you did it. And the, the whole point I'm trying to get across is that nobody, nobody just all of a sudden becomes enlightened or nobody just all of a sudden becomes magically that the person who they thought they could always be. It's like anyone who, who is a legend at what they do, anyone who who is a great at what they do, like you just have to get started, and that's that's all I'm really trying to encourage people to do is actually begin on the path, like actually fucking do it. And what you'll start to realize is there there are other people who are doing this, and we can engage with each other. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm making a video. That's why I'm on the Instagram Live. To anyone who joined on Instagram Live, feel free to ask a question, make a comment or whatever. It's good because it helps me to, to think of better ideas or, or continue the conversation or to have actual feedback. It's cool. So feel free. Um, but yeah, it's like you're never going to, what I would say is it's never just going to happen. Like, and I was like that for so many years of my life. Like I was passive to life. Like I, I was under the impression that somehow life would come together for me. 
that like somehow my teacher would tell me when I was smart or or my fucking soccer coach would tell me when I was a good player or when it was enough or or some magical man in the sky would one day come to me and be like, oh, Luke, now it's time to to live your dreams. And I was always under that impression and I didn't realize how messy it was. I didn't want to accept that. Most people don't. They don't want to accept how messy, you know, life can be. And the truth is it is fucking messy, but it's also hilarious. It's also fucking hilarious. And it also is cool. And it's, it's not that same old thing. It's not a movie, right? Like it, it's not, it's not a Hollywood movie with like happy endings and everyone gets along. Everyone likes you. Like it's not, it, it doesn't need to be like that. Cause it's a real thing. This is a real thing that we're doing. And, and that's what makes it cool. It's not that same old stupid bullshit of like following every single rule and everyone's going to like you. And that's another thing. Not everyone's going to like you. And that's cool. That's fine. That's polarizing. That's polarization. We want to, it's fine to polarize. Shitloads of people are not going to like you. They're going to say you're fucking stupid. They're going to say what you're, what you're doing is weird and fucking dumb. That's fine. In fact, it's funny. I was talking to a girl the other day and she was telling me like, um, she was like, Hey, you know what? I always liked the bad characters in, in stories. She's like, I always liked the bad guys. I always liked the, like, I always liked the villain. Like I kind of, she was saying like, I kind of want to be the villain. And I was telling her like, Hey, you know what? You actually, if you, if you just actually do the right thing for yourself, if you just actually do the right thing and be congruent with yourself and be like spreading generosity and love and like, compassion and understanding towards people if you actually just do that you will have so many people fucking hate you <laughs> and try to try to stop you and try to put bullshit on you that you'll end up being the villain to plenty of people so it's like you can be the villain too but from a good place like think about how many people talk shit towards like legendary people like even like joe rogan or like even like eckhart tolle or like Dan Bilzerian or all these people, all these guys or, or women too, like think about like someone like Beyonce or something. So I know there's lots of girls that watch this. Think about someone like Beyonce, like think about how much bullshit and hate or she pays. Fuck you, Beyonce. I didn't like your shirt, your fucking hair color. Meh, meh, meh. People just are going to hate on you for doing what you love. Think about that. Think about that. That's our society. That's mainstream society. That's what people are going around worried about what what these people think but they're fucking ridiculous they're they're people who will hate on you for doing what you love so you don't need to worry about it, it and it's just building up resistance building up like reference experiences to that like who gives a shit it, it's good i'm glad if i if i'm somewhere and there's fucking 10 people who say i'm an idiot fuck you luke perfect that's great i love that that's awesome because now I can start to find people who say you're cool. Because if I find 10 people who say I'm fucking stupid, uh, maybe I can find one who thinks I'm cool. That's fine. I can deal with that. It's like if you want to try to get like a girlfriend or like a boyfriend or whatever. It's like if I talk to 100 girls and 100 girls say, fuck you, Luke. You're stupid and weird and your fucking beard and your man bun are dumb. Fuck you. Cool. Perfect. But you know what? If I meet one girl who says, Luke, you're cool as shit and you're smart and I like hanging out with you, that's perfect. Then I've met one person who really likes me for who I am. So if I have to meet 100 people who think I'm stupid and weird and fucking dumb and my beard is stupid, that's okay. I'm willing to, I'm willing to endure 100 people not liking me for meeting one person who does like me. Okay, you see that? You see how I'm willing to do that? Because I'm not concerned with those 100 people who didn't like me. I'm concerned with the one person who does, and I'm willing to put up with anything in order to do that. It's like, for example, Dan Bilzerian, you, uh, Instagram, king of Instagram, quote unquote, you know, he's got all the pictures of bullshit with the money and planes and him with the girls and everything. And I was listening recently to some guys who are friends with him. And they were saying, yeah, you know what? We always meet girls who, who, when we mention we're friends with Dan Bilzerian, they say, that's, he's a dickhead, he's an asshole, I would never hook up with Dan Bilzerian, I would never have sex with Dan Bilzerian. And they say, oh really, that's interesting. And when they ask Dan about that, Dan Bilzerian says, okay, maybe. He says, I don't fucking care. 
He says, I don't care if a hundred thousand girls think I'm fucking stupid and weird and would never, would never spend time with me. He says, because I'm only interested in the small proportion that do. And if say only 2% of women, or if you're, if you're, if you're a woman, say men are interested in you, if only 2% are interested in you, that's good. Because there's such a massive proportion of people, there's such a vast pie, there's such a vast amount of people, that all you need, need is 2%. 2% of 100 people is 2 people. Okay? So if you're, a, if you're a woman and you want to meet like a cool guy, like a good guy, but every guy you meet, you say, all guys are assholes, every guy I meet's a fucking dickhead, da 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 maybe, but maybe it's only 98. Maybe 98 guys you meet you don't like and are dickheads and are fuckheads and treat you badly. That's fine because you only want 2%. But if you meet two guys or if you're, the, if you're a guy and you want girls that's fine, or however the fuck your operation is, if you only need to meet two people who you really engage with and you really like, those other 98 who give a fuck, they're probably drug. <laughs> it's like, the, again, back to why you should get into meditation and back to why it doesn't matter what people think is because such the, the vast proportion of people are so fucked up anyway that they have no idea what's going on. So we're only concerned with the few people who we do want to talk to, right? And you, you, can, you can really uh, build up your tolerances to, to this. And it's like to the point where you can begin to realize – it, I know it's hard at first. Like, I'm not saying it's, it's like easy to do, or I'm not saying I'm like impervious to it or whatever, but you, you can, you can build up that tolerance. Like you can do it. And in fact, it's the only thing you can do. It's the only thing you should be doing. Okay. So, um, feel free again to, to, write a message or whatever if you want if you have a comment on this I can I can answer it or maybe it will help steer the direction whatever whatever people want um, I encourage people if they're watching later on Instagram live or YouTube or whatever make comments so we can see where we're at um, okay so basically that's that's where we're at it's it's there's and this is really a good way for people to begin is three minutes of meditation. Three minutes. Like what, what you're, you're going to start to invest in yourself. Three minutes. You can do that. You, you can do it. You can invest three minutes into yourself and you can do it three times a week and you can do that for three months. Right. And that's how you're going to know you're on the path. That's your, that's, and even if you do nothing else in your life, even if you do nothing else, even if you don't ever like eat properly, even if you don't ever change anything else, this is going to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of opportunity to make these changes in your life. And that's what you want. That's, that's the kind of person who you want to be. Okay. That's who you want to be. <sighs> okay. I'm going to tell like a quick story here. I, I think I told it maybe before, but I'm going to tell it again because it's such a good story. And I, and I just recently read it again. I'm reading The Peaceful Warrior right now. And he mentioned the story again. So, and also going back to Dan Blazarian, he said this story when he was on Joe Rogan. So I love this story anyway. I'm going to say it again. Okay. So there was this, there was this farmer in, in ancient China and he was working on his farm with his son. They didn't really have much money. They just had this little farm with one, with one horse and they would take the horse around and um, they would ride the horse and they would go out into the field and like collect their, their crops and stuff. And one day there was a storm and it blew over the fence and the horse got away. Their one fucking horse got away. And all the neighbors came around and said to the old farmer and his son, like, Oh my gosh, it's so sad. You're, your horse ran away. And the old farmer said, maybe. The next day, the horse came back and he had brought with him five more wild horses to the farm. So the poor farmer now had six horses. And the, the neighbors came around and said, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. 
you got now you've got five new horses you're rich and the old farmer said maybe the next day the farmer's son was out riding one of the new horses trying to break it in and as he was riding it the son got thrown off and broke his leg so he couldn't help on the farm or anything and the old farmer had to look after him while his leg was broken. The neighbors came around again and said, oh my gosh, it's so sad, your son's got a broken leg. Farmer said, maybe. The next day, the army came around and they recruited all the young men in the town to go fight in a war. But they didn't take the old farmer's son because he had a broken leg. All the townspeople came around and said, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. They didn't take your son. Old man said, maybe. You see? So you don't know. You don't know what the fuck is good or what the fuck is bad. You don't know um, that when things happen, the purpose of it is for you to be less reactive to it and say, I don't know what the purpose of this is. Like, even if right now your life sucks and like you're, you're, your thoughts are all messed up and your diet's all messed up and your program's all messed up. You're not meditating. You're not thinking clearly. You want to think like this old farmer, like, is this good? Is this bad? I don't know. Maybe. Let's see. What can I make of it? What can I, how can I turn this into something for myself? It's like, look at some of like the legendary people. Like, I'll just talk about some of the legendary people that I'm big fans of. Like, look at even David Goggins, who's a former Navy SEAL. He's been on Rogan's podcast. And he was massively overweight. Massively. You can see pictures of him. He was massive. And he was, like, eating bullshit all the day. And he was working as, like, an exterminator, I think. Like, exterminating rats and everything. And he just... He was not happy. He was depressed. His life fucking sucked. He was always... Um, he was always, like, upset about... Like even like his childhood where he was he was like constantly trying to like get along with people that he didn't really care about and everything. <clears throat> One day he just massively altered his life. He wanted to join the Navy SEALs. He wanted to join the Navy SEALs and he just massively changed his life. Like he started running. In fact, he, he changed his life at such a breakneck speed that like his legs were breaking and shit when he was running. He was like, his like organs were failing. I'm not saying you have to go to that extreme, but look at how this guy was in such a shitty position, but he massively altered it. Now he does like, check out his Instagram, David Goggins. He does like, he's been on Rogan. He, he's been like this massive inspiration on Instagram. He does speaking tours and stuff. This guy went huge. This guy went massive, massive, massive. And he did that, right? He made a decision to do that. But the point is, look at how he was not, he was not, he was not born, like, he was not just all of a sudden like that, right? Like, he had to do it. He had to make it happen. Um, another example, even look at Rogan himself. Like, Joe Rogan, he was a fucking basically addicted to playing video games. I don't know if you've heard him talk about that, but yeah, he was playing Quake, which is like a first person shooter. He was playing Quake for like hours and hours a day. And he would even have like these, like this, like internet gaming parties, like at his house or some shit. Like he was not perfect. He felt like a loser. Like when he was younger, like he didn't know how he was going to ever become successful. Like he was confused. He he was like, uh, he even tried to get, like, hair implants at one point because he was, like, going bald and he was, like, trying to fit in to be on, like, a sitcom or some shit. Like, he was not always perfect. Like, he was just doing his best. But over time, he developed himself. He learned. He he grew. And now he's a fucking legend. Look at these guys. Look at these people who have done these things. Like, I'm sure there's shitloads more. And, and, like, I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't, if you're just going through life, like floating on the t surface, like if you're just going through like floating along the surface and you're constantly just trying to avoid like the deeper level of discontent or like the deeper level of like pain and unhappiness or whatever your fucking issue is, if you're overweight, if you're in a fucked up relationship, if your life sucks, whatever it is, you're, you're just always missing 
the like fundamental experience of life. Like you're always missing the present moment existence. And that's what most people are doing, right? That's most people. Seriously, 80%. That's what they're doing. They're just, they're just moment to moment trying to struggle to avoid the reality of where they're really at, forget their dreams, um, hide from experiences from their past, like think about, they're trying to think about anything, distract themselves with television shows and bullshit and gossip. And people gossip. That's a fucked up one. When I hear people gossip, I, like to me, it's like it's similar to smoking meth. When I see people, when I hear people gossiping, full grown adult, and they're gossiping about someone else, like I look at them like they just lit up a meth pipe. Why are you talking about another human being when they're not here and you're just talking negative shit about them without any purpose? What is that doing for anyone? Like, why are you doing that? And people just do it. And they don't, because they don't see the cost, right? They don't, they don't pay the cost of that right away. But it's eroding you. It's eroding the fabric of who you want to be. So that's another thing you can do. Stop gossiping. Start meditating. Get it the fuck going. Hmm? So... <laughs> there's a few examples today you've gotten of people who have been in shitty situations and then made some changes. Rogan, David Goggins, follow them both on Instagram, follow Rogan's podcast. There's lots of good information there. Um, please do your meditation today. Just fucking lay back and do it. And then, then message me. Literally, you can just DM me and be like, Luke, I did my meditation. I'll message you back and be like, fuck yeah. Do it again in another day or two. Because <laughs> I'll be doing it. It's like, yo, I'm doing... I might even at one point make a video of me just meditating for a fucking hour. Like, do you have any concept of what that's like to meditate for an hour? I don't know what the monks are doing up in the fucking... Up in the mountainous retreats where they meditate like 10 hours a day. I don't know. But, yo, when I do an hour, that shit's like warfare, man. Like, I'm like... I treat that as like warfare. Like, I'm not jumping off a longboat anymore. Maybe my ancestors were, like, going to war with, like, knights in shining armor. I don't know. But to me, that's what it's like. Like, it's fucking brutality. Like, holy shit. Like, you want to just sit back and just endure your own thoughts and your own shit for an hour? Holy fuck. That's just brutality. Like, no wonder everyone pays money for pills and fucking bullshit and distraction. Because no one wants to do it. It's too hard. In fact, I remember... My friend, she was, she was trying to start meditation and I was like encouraging her like, yeah, you should do it and stuff. And she's like, well, did you do yours today? <laughs> she would ask me like whenever I saw her and I was like, she was like, well, did you do your meditation today? And my answer was just like, oh, like, just like, oh, like there's no words. There's no word to describe it. Like you're, you're like, I like an hour. Yeah. Like I did it. Like it happened. It's like you. It's like she's asking me, like, did you, like, go to fight in the, in a fucking, in the trenches today? And I'm like, yeah, I was in the trenches. Like, I was there. Like, it was, it was insane. But you know what? I, it, I guess I could say it has gotten, it, it, I don't know if easier is the right word. I don't know if I'd say easier, but it has gotten, it's gotten less likely that I won't do it. Yeah, yeah. It's gotten less likely that I won't do it. Now there's just no choice. Now I just deem it as there's just no choice. I burn the boats. Like I'm just, I just get in there. I just put the headphones in and I just get back. It's like one hour, just crank it out. So that's why I want you people to do three minutes. Just give me three minutes. Just give it to me. Just give me three minutes. Turn the video off right now and just go and do it. You got, there's, I'm going to do another 40 seconds and it's just going to be me telling you to fucking go meditate for three minutes. Right? You have no choice. Like, just accept it. Just accept it. You have no option. You have to breathe today. You have to drink some water, and you've got to go meditate. Hashtag go fucking meditate. You don't need to be a Buddhist monk. You don't need to be some Zen motherfucker with beads on. No, I don't care who you are. You can be some jacked up meathead. You can be some fucking hawk girl. Who cares? Just go do it. Just accept this is your this is your new reality. You're gonna be meditating three minutes, three times a week for three months. Fucking do it. 
Don't ask any questions. Don't fucking debate it. Just go do it. There we go. That was half an hour. Thank you for anyone who tuned in. Um, appreciate you people for commenting and whatever you're doing. Peace out.